Today's MTG box analysis will be for the March 22nd opening of an Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set booster box. We'll start by reviewing the cards that we were eligible to see in the box and compare that to the cards that we actually observed. Then we'll look at set coverage, coverage by rarity, and duplication. From a value perspective, we'll break down the potential value of the cards that we could have seen in the box and compare that to the actual observed value. Finally, we'll conclude with a summary. If you want to go deeper into the analysis and see all of the metrics for this box and almost 100 other boxes, simply join the channel at the Give Me the Data level. Let's start things off by taking a look at what we saw in this box. Using this chart, we will be exploring the difference between the total number of cards that we were eligible to see from the set versus the number of cards that we observed during the opening. With regard to the non-foil cards, we did see a variance of 11 cards between Black's 41 cards and White's 52. Also in the non-foil space, we saw two cards from the Dungeon Module category and three cards from the Borderless category. As for the foil cards, we observed between two and seven cards for each of the primary colors of Magic, as well as cards from almost every other eligible category. Now let's shift our focus over to coverage. With regard to the non-foil cards, we were able to see 233 unique cards out of a possible 358, indicating that we saw 65% of the cards that we were eligible to pull from the set. Among the primary colors of Magic, our greatest coverage was in white with 79% coverage. Each of our set booster packs featured a foil card, and five of them also contained a foil basic land, meaning that we saw a total of 35 foils. Since none of these were duplicated, we saw 10% of the 358 cards we were eligible to see. This time around, our highest coverage among the primary colors was in green with 16% coverage. Now let's pivot to coverage by rarity. In the non-foil space, we observed 78% of the commons and 84% of the eligible uncommons in the box. Additionally, we saw 31 rares achieving 37% coverage and 4 mythics achieving 12% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 17% of the commons, 8% of the uncommons, and 2 rares for 2% coverage. Overall, this box contained 33 rares and 4 mythics from the main set, plus 2 additional rares from the list. This gave us 35 rares and 4 mythics across the 30 packs that we opened today. As I mentioned earlier, none of our foils were duplicated, but 79 of the non-foils were repeated 92 times, giving this box a duplication rate of 26%. From a value perspective, let's start out by examining the current market value of the set as of March 20th, 2023. This chart shows all 358 cards that can be found from the main set inside of a set booster pack, broken down by category and dollar range based on non-foil pricing. At present, there are three cards valued above $10. They are the Borderless Tiamat, valued at $16.16, and both versions of Old Gnawbone, the, with the standard frame coming in at $21.06, and the Borderless coming in at $33.04. Set booster packs also feature up to eight different cards valued between $5 and $10, and 44 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 303 possible non-foil cards are currently valued under $1. If you were to tally up all the non-foil market prices of the 358 cards, the combined market value would come out to be $285.21. Moving on to the value we observed in this box, let's begin in the non-foil space. Unfortunately, we didn't see any of the three cards valued over $10 in this box. However, we did see two of the eight cards valued between $5 and $10, including the Aserac the Arc Lich at $7.06 and the Teleportation Circle at $8.82. Additionally, we picked up 14 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 309 cards in the box were valued under $1. Foil space, we didn't see any cards valued over $5, and only 3 foils valued between $1 and $5. The other 32 foils that we saw were all valued less than $1. Replacing 9 of our tokens were cards from the list. Now in previous set booster boxes of AFR that I've opened, the highest number I've seen is 6, so this is by far the most that I've been able to pull. Now, eight of these cards were valued under a dollar, but one of them was not, and that was the Panharmonicon from Kaladesh, valued at $6.46 as a list card. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box from Card Kingdom for $91.99 last month. As of March 20th, 2023, the market price for these boxes is up to $95.17 on TCG Player. This set booster box contained 30 packs with 12 cards each, allowing us to see a total of 360 cards. Now, the 29 non-signed and one signed art card have a current market value of $7.15 and an average value of $0.24 cents apiece. The 9 cards from the list are currently valued at $9.64. The 19 tokens are valued at $6.58 combined, thanks mostly to the Boo token that we saw. The 30 basic lands are valued at $2.37. 
and the 164 commons are currently valued at $12.93. The 129 uncommons have a value of $24.64 combined, and the 33 rares are the most valuable rarity, pulling in $39.88 of value. The four mythics currently are valued at $11.06, but do have the highest average card value of $2.77 apiece. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes up to be $114.25 in card value, which is $22.26 over my purchase price for the box, resulting in a return of 124% of the purchase price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 12 cards valued over 2 bucks in this box, and they have a current combined market value of $51.85, which represents 45% of the total value in the box and 56% of my purchase price for the box. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, do something amazing.